Welcome back everybody to the complete beginners course for ICT students. Today, we're going to put everything together. So everything that we've talked about throughout the entire course, I'm going to put everything together in one short format for all of you. Now this is not an end all be all, but this is something that you're going to work with the rest of your trading career. And this is a framework in which you will go into the market and you look for this specific pattern. It's something that will replicate. It's not going to look exactly like the same thing every single time, but the same characteristics will play out. So let's go into the first slide here. Introduction to creating your model. What is a model? A model is like a recipe that guides you through a trading process, telling you when to wait for more information, when to execute, where to place your stop loss, when to take partials, your trading model is a framework or pattern that repeats in the market and you look to execute upon it. How do I build a model? Throughout this course in ICT education, you will put together concepts that fit your personality and your style of trading. Next presentation, I'll put everything learned in the course together so you have a sound model to trade with. So a model, again, is something that you're going to look for every single day. It may not repeat every single day, it may only repeat once a week, sometimes more than that. And it's something that is easy to look for. It's not something that is overcomplicated. You know exactly what you're looking for. And if it doesn't print in the market, then you don't touch the market. And there's other models out there. There's other things that you can expand upon. But for now, the easiest thing that you can do is focus on one model, one framework, and practice that over and over again. And look for it every single day record it, put it in a journal, and that way it builds repetition. And as you become experienced with this, then you can expand your knowledge and you can look for other things in the market um, besides this one. But I'm gonna give you one of them. Um, it's If you go through ICT's YouTube channel, the 2022 mentorship, this is basically what it is, but I've simplified it um, basically into like nine videos. So introduction to creating your model, step-by-step -step, step -step process. Number one time. Our focus is looking for the model to appear inside of a 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time silver bullet window. So all you're doing is you're looking at one hour of time each day during the New York session silver bullet, which is from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Second, liquidity. During the silver bullet window, we will observe a 15 and a five minute time frame and annotate the buy side liquidity and the sell side liquidity pools. Number three liquidity raids. After identifying your liquidity pools, you will look for either side to be raided in a sudden displacement higher or lower away from the liquidity pool. So throughout the course here, we've talked about time, we've talked about liquidity, we've talked about liquidity raids. Number four, a shift in market structure. After the buy side slash sell side has been raided, you will look for a shift underneath a previous higher low or above a previous lower high, confirming price is shifting to a downtrend or an uptrend. So the second video in this course, we've talked about market structure. We've talked about how price can change from a bullish uptrend down to a bearish downtrend and vice versa. So you're going to look for that after a liquidity raid has been taken place. So the again, we're going to reiterate, you're going to sit down during the New York session and look for a one hour window. You're going to mark up your liquidity pools. So when you go down, the simplest thing I can Annotate is going down to a 15 minute time frame and looking at your highs and lows. That's all you're doing. You're marking out buy side, you're marking out sell side. And then you're looking to see, is there a liquidity raid that has happened or one that you believe is going to happen? And then you're going to look for a shift in market structure. So you're going to see a, a displacement away from that other liquidity pool. And it's confirming to you that you're shifting from an uptrend to a downtrend or vice versa. And the fifth thing is you're looking for a fair value gap. So after the market structure shift, you will look for a fair value gap to form that is resting inside of a premium or a discount. So we've talked about premium and discounts. You're going to look for a fair value gap that is residing inside of a premium or a discount that has just happened. So I'm going to go over a demonstration here. This is a bearish framework. So on the left side, I have kind of all the steps and the right side is just a basic framework. So if we go over here, what's the first step? First step is what? Time. 
So inside of the silver bullet window, which is going to be at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to look to see is this can happen in various ways. Again, this is unique, but the easiest way is to look either during that window, do you believe that a liquidity rate is going to happen? Or B, has something happened between the eight or the 9.30 open to the 10 o'clock? Has a raid already happened? And then you're going into the silver bullet and price starts displacing, making a movement lower or higher. So in this case, during that first 30 minute window that we do not trade, we're waiting for the silver bullet. It's taking out buy side liquidity. So step two, buy side liquidity has been ran. So you see buy stops being taken out and going right into the silver bullet, you start seeing a drop lower. So you're seeing a displacement lower. You're seeing a shift in market structure. So remember we have an uptrend here where we have a higher high, a higher low. We have a higher high, but knowing that if I'm looking for lower prices on the day, we need to see buy side taken first. So all the, the buyers are taken on the market, right? All the money is taken. And then you see a displacement and a shift lower, shifting market structure, telling you that we're going from an uptrend into a downtrend. So that's our third step. The fourth step is looking for a fair value gap inside of a premium. So you're going to see how price shifts market structure. Now we have a new lower low. Price is then going to breathe back in, right? We have market breathing out market breathing back into a premium. Anything above the equilibrium, the 50% is a premium. So anything up here, see the red, is going to be a premium. So price is retracing up into the premium. And last but not least, price is going to displace off lower to tax outside liquidity. Now, something I did not put in here is uh, SMT, which we talked about in the previous video. So what you'll be observing is that these highs up here, and you'll see the next couple slides is, there's going to be SMT. So that's something that you can look for is if the other indexes printed a bearish SMT divergence, you can use that in this framework. So if you see this happening and then you look and you observe the other indexes and you're comparing it and you see an SMT forming, that's already, that's just another confluence. It's gonna help your trade idea. But I wanted to make this as bare bones, as simple as possible. So you're gonna wait for that. And as soon as you see the fair value gap, you're going to enter in at the 10 or 25% of the fair value gap. And where's your stop loss going? It's either going to go above the high here, or if you go back to the fair value gap video, the stop loss is going above the second candle that creates the fair value gap. And what you're doing is you're targeting sell side liquidity. So you would be looking at this low and then any other sell side liquidity that's resting underneath price, you're going to be looking to target that as your take profit. And that's it in a, in a whole. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. It's not going to happen every single day, but this is something that you can look for in journal every single day and look for it in the market. And if you can get good at this, then you can start expanding upon other models and looking for other things. So in here, this is stop loss would go up here and then you take profit down here. And it's whatever you're comfortable with. Your your own trade and where you want to you know take your profits is, is up to you. But personally, um, you're going to look at the nearest sell side liquidity pools, which would be underneath the low there and underneath here. Again, this is your dealing range high to your dealing range low. So price is breathing back in and then breathing out. So that's it for the bearish framework. This would be a bullish framework. It's just going to be inversed. But again, to reiterate, step one is time. You have the silver bullet window. It's the first thing we're doing is placing ourselves inside of a good time window. Secondly, we're going to look to see, can a raid on liquidity happen during the silver bullet window or has it happened before it? So write those things, those two things down. Either we're observing a raid that's going to happen within the silver bullet window or has it already happened and you're rolling into the silver bullet window. Those things are important. In this instance, it's happening before the silver bullet. So if I'm, the first thing you need to be doing when you're looking at a day is, all right, so simply put, am I looking for higher prices or lower prices? That's it. If I'm looking for higher prices, then I need to be looking for, can I get a sell side liquidity rate? So you can see sell side is resting underneath the low here. Price is taking that out. So that's step two, sell side liquidity rate. Third step, we're looking for displacement, energetic displacement higher, shifting above a previous high. So we have a lower low, lower high, lower low. But we know that 
this lower low is just a raid on sell side liquidity. Price is then displacing above a lower high, which is a shift in market structure. It's telling you that it's no longer bearish. We're going into an uptrend. So step three, shift in market structure. So from this dealing range low to wherever this high ends up, that is your dealing range. And you're looking to see, all right, is there a fair value gap that is inside of a discount? So where this equilibrium is, you can see price breeze back in into the bullish fair value gap, which is step three, discount fair value gap. So we have our discount here. We're not buying in a premium. Remember premium discount? We're not buying in a premium. We're, we're buying in a discount. So in here, step three, buying inside of a discount. And then we're longing to get above the buy side here and any buy side that's resting above us. So any highs that are above price, you can look to target and use as your take profit. Again, the last step that I would put in here is SMT. So what you would be observing is the lows in here. So maybe YM or an ES, either of the two, maybe they didn't make the lower low, which would be a bullish SMT divergence. Remember the video we just talked about? But I'm not going to advance it, but that's something that you can add into your own little recipe as well. But you can you could just use this. You don't have to use SMT if it confuses you. Again, this is a another example with your stop loss and your take profit. So you'd be entering in at the 10 to 25% of the bullish fair value gap. And you put in your stop loss beneath the low. Put your take profit either here or at any buy side liquidity that's above price. Okay. The next step, this is a real chart example of a bearish example. So these dotted lines, this is the silver bullet window. Right, New York session, silver bullet window. So we have buy side above this high here, above these highs. So what is price doing? Step one. So rolling into the silver bullet window, we can see price taking out buy side liquidity. If I'm looking for lower prices on the day, I want to see all the buyers taken out of the market. So you can see buy side is being taken out. What's step two? We need to see an energetic displacement lower shifting underneath an old low. So in here, we have a higher high, a higher low, higher high, then price is shifting from an uptrend down to a downtrend. So we're shifting underneath that low in here. See how we close underneath this low? So that's step two. Step three is price retracing back inside of a fair value gap. So from this dealing range high down to this low, equilibrium is here. So we have our discount. We're not selling in a discount. Remember, we're selling in a premium. So we don't want to sell down here. If there's a fair value gap down here, I'm not selling in there. I'm selling at the premium fair value gap. So price retraces up into the bearish fair value gap. Where is our entry at the 10 to 25% of the fair value gap? Our stop loss is either going to go above the second candle that creates the fair value gap or above this high. That's whatever you're comfortable with. Remember, one, two, three. That's three candles that create the fair value gap. So my stop loss can go above here or above there. And then we're selling short. Our take profit can go beneath this low in here or any other sell side liquidity that's resting beneath price. So then price drops down, takes out sell side liquidity in here. Step five, and the last but not least would be or step four I have in here is SMT. So you can observe the highs in here to confirm to you if there's a bearish SMT divergence, then that's confirming this entire idea to you. It's an extra confirmation. So you're gonna look for this framework. It's not gonna look identical every single time, but for the most part, the characteristics and the patterns are going to play out pretty perfectly um, over and over again. So you wanna record this journal it, see the different kind of unique characteristics between them. But for the most part, this is going to play out. And you want to observe this. And if you can execute upon this, this is all you need. You don't need to look for anything else inside of the market. This is everything that you would need to be a profitable trader. So this would be a bullish model. So again, we're coming into, this is the dotted lines. Step one would be time, New York session, silver bullet. We're looking inside of a one hour window of time. So I'm marking out how going into the silver bullet, we're taking out sell side liquidity, right? This is sell side liquidity, that's step one. So we see that being taken out. Now I'm not doing anything yet because step one is just, I'm looking for sell side to be taken. 
Step two would be looking for that energetic displacement higher, confirming to me that we're shifting from a downtrend into an uptrend. So in here, this is our previous high. Price is shifting above it. What does price do from there? Step three is you're looking for your fair value gap. So from this low up to that high, that's your dealing range. Premiums here, discounts there. We don't want to be buying inside of a premium. We want to be buying inside of a discount. So price retraces back into the bullish fair value gap. Our entry is at 10 to 25%. Then price expands away. So market breathes out, breathes back in, breathes out again. Anything above price we can use as a take profit. So that high there or any old highs that we look back in time, any liquidity pools we can look to target. Again, the last step would be SMT observing the lows. But you want to make sure that all of these steps are in place first. And then SMT would kind of be your cherry on top something that you're looking at to confirm this overall idea to you. So I hope this has helped. I've tried to put everything together from the entire course and, and make it very simple for all of you. Again, this course is not an end-all be-all. It's simply a training wheels to ICT and to his education, uh, something to simplify it. Again, I made this for a man, family member, somebody who is just getting into trading, and I wanted to simplify everything for them. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. There's going to be one last video. Uh, besides this one, which will be over psychology and risk management, which are very, very important. So make sure you guys do watch that. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next video here.